Um, my name is Randy Asman. I'm one of our traffic engineers from the, from the DOT and our Green Bay office. I've been involved with this project from the beginning almost. Um, and we're here, finally we're here, um, to the point where now we can get traffic back where it needs to be and, um, and we have a better, a better system around on, on, the, on the highway itself. So what we're going to do is um, I'm going to cover, well I'll show you in a minute what we're going to cover, i got a little slide. So, so here this is, this is a typical reaction for a community who has not had a roundabout yet, okay? And so this is the, the graphic on top was one, if you heard about the roundabout in the pier that was built back in 2007 or 8, somewhere in there, um, it was the first multi-lane roundabout in, in northeast Wisconsin, okay? So this, this particular graphic says, look, there's an airplane landing on the road. <laughs> See, I told you people wouldn't know how to drive the, the pier roundabout, okay? So, the, the point being is every time a roundabout gets introduced into a community, the first time, the second time, the third time, once you have a half a dozen or a dozen um, in your community or close by, well then, then this reaction changes, okay? <clears throat> this is in the Sheboygan paper. I used to go to Menards, but not anymore. You don't know where you are going half of the time, <laughs> okay? And that same thing, you're going to hear that here. And some of you have that opinion. And at the end of this, some of you are still going to have that same opinion. You're just going to say, that guy's full of it. I don't want to listen to him. I'm not going to use the roundabouts. That's okay. All right? There's other ways to get around. Um, but my point is that roundabouts are different than what we all are used to. Okay? Um, we grew up without them. And now here, something's being introduced that's different than what you're used to. So change is hard to get, you know, to, to accept at times, and that's what, that's what exactly what roundabouts are. So we're going to talk about why, is, why are the roundabouts being built, how do you drive them, and then some, what are some of the things that we can, we can provide to you to help to understand um, how to drive them better, okay? So this first this video clip here is, um, <coughs> it's a crash that's going to happen because someone ran the red light, okay? And I don't know why this particular individual ran the red light. Um, but the fact of the matter is that it, that it happened, okay? And it can happen anywhere. It could happen as we're here in this meeting, hopefully not. Um, it doesn't happen every day. But the point, the point is that 90 degree crashes, people turning left in front of another at a, at a signal, it happens every day, okay? And those crashes seem to be the one, are the ones that seem to be more severe, um, those right angle type, okay? So this is what can happen. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cars that are, seven vehicles involved, right? I don't know how many people. Maybe the person had some medical issue. I'm not sure. Maybe they're on the phone. Maybe they're distracted. There was pedestrians in the crosswalk right here. Uh, let me go on the screen. Right here. That those that white truck nearly hit. Okay. So I don't want to make make you think that I'm up here to tell you that traffic signals are bad. That's not the case, okay? Um, but there's a time and a place for both. So just kind of keep that in mind. Why is DOT and, and cities and counties and other municipalities, why are they building roundabouts? It's to somewhat eliminate these opportunities from happening um, at those sorts of intersections. So how do we make decisions? How does DOT make decisions? We have a, we have a policy where we are required to evaluate at Michigan and Egg Harbor, we evaluated a roundabout and a traffic signal, and we compared all those all those bullet points right there. It wasn't because Randy said, you know what, boss, let's build a roundabout there. That's not how it works, and it shouldn't work that way. Okay? So we look at all these different factors, and not one is more important than the other. The one that we hang our hat on though is, is safety. And you'll see in a minute why why we do. <clears throat> um, in the in the case of Michigan, Michigan Street in particular, it would have cost um, over a million dollars more to build a traffic signalized intersection there than a roundabout. Okay? So that's one factor in the decision. One factor in the decision. Okay? So we look at those and we, we, we sit down as a group in the office, we hold public meetings, uh, we talk to local officials, and ultimately, you know, a decisions, a decisions made, and that's where we're at. So it's not because I think it's the right thing to do. It's not because 
my coworker thinks it's the wrong thing to do. It's a, it's a group decision. We have a document that's put together that we review and then ultimately make a decision. Um, so like, the, like the, we saw in the video, every one of those red dots on the left is an opportunity to, 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 um, for those right angle type of crashes to occur. Okay, so that intersection that you see on the left, it's a busy intersection that has quite a few turn lanes. Um, this particular one is in Oshkosh. But the point of this slide is there's 45 different places at this particular intersection where you can hit someone or someone could hit you. Okay, if you run a red light, if you turn in front of someone, um, I think things like that, okay? The same intersection, if you were to build the same intersection as a roundabout, holding the same amount of traffic as shown on the right, your chances of hitting someone or someone hitting you go from 45 to 26. So let me ask you this. Knowing those two numbers, which intersection would you, which, which one would you rather drive through? The one on the left. Okay, he's a dare, he's a daredevil. That's okay. Right. So the one on the right, the one on the right, just by the numbers, and by the fact that we eliminate the chances of those right angle crashes, the one on the right is safer. But we're we're comfortable with this. We're not comfortable with that. Okay? Now, um, the, the high school kids and the ones that are in their 20s, they are comfortable with the right and the left. Okay? The ones that are older, they're comfortable with this and not comfortable with that. That's just life. Because the younger ones, they're, they're more adept to uh, accepting change and so on. To me, I look at this and there's no question in my mind I'd rather go through that every single time than this, just by the numbers. Okay? But we have to, you know, the part is people aren't comfortable driving through them, and that's part of that's part of learning. Okay. So what did DOT do um, since we built the roundabouts? We've been ongoing. We've constantly been monitoring the roundabouts that we've built. Okay. And we we, we monitor them for how how efficiently is traffic moving through them, and then more importantly, how safe are they compared to what the intersection used to be. Okay, so what the study showed, this is the real deal. This is you look at an intersection in Green Bay, you look at an intersection in Madison, you look at an intersection in La Crosse, wherever it is where we converted a traffic signal to a roundabout, there's a 38% reduction in injuries and fatalities. 38%. So if I just go by sheer numbers, everyone in this room got involved in a traffic um, crash at a traffic signal in their life. Okay? This many of you won't if those were all converted to a roundabout. That means that many of you don't get an ambulance ride, don't have a vehicle to fix, don't have doctor bills. That's real. 40, nearly 40%. So you, when, we, when you say, why, why do people build these? That's why. 40% of people are, getting, are not getting injured now. That's huge. That's why DOT is serious about it. That's why counties are building them. That's why villages are building them. That's why develop, developers, people with uh, building their own developments, are building them. Now, on the flip side, because they're new, in some locations we see increase in fender benders. You will see an increase in fender benders. Okay? I'm not going to tell you uh, the first week there's not going to be a crash. If I'm betting on it, there will be one. It's new, it's different, and that's the way that it goes, and then over time it gets better, okay? So, um, regarding pedestrians, at the roundabouts, um, as you see on your little handout, Michigan for sure, and Egg Harbor as well, there will be a sidewalk around the perimeter of the roundabout for pedestrians. Whether you're walking, whether you're biking, um, whatever it may be, okay? And there's concern about the YMCA and crossroads and you know how are the kids going to get across? No one's going to stop. The kids are going to have to dart out. That's all the things that we've heard. Okay, and those same concerns have been voiced to us in other communities, and we don't have. There hasn't been a problem. Okay, so the the the, the nature of the roundabout requires people to slow down, right? And most likely. 
a kid or someone else is going to sit here, stand here, until there's a gap over here comfortable enough that they, they can go ahead and cross to the middle. Okay? And then once they're in the middle, okay, now they have to look for people exiting the roundabout, and then they cross the other side. It's different, again, than what we're used to. We're used to at a traffic signal waiting for that little white guy to, to show up on the light, and then it's time to go. We turn our blinders on, and hopefully everyone watches for us. This requires more interaction between that walker and that driver. Okay? So you can see by the numbers, the higher the speed, the greater probability that if there's a crash with a pedestrian, that it becomes you know, potentially a fatality. So again, we haven't had issues. Um, we haven't had issues with, with, um, with pedestrians, whether they're at our interchanges um, on the state highway system, whether they're in downtown areas in Oshkosh, um, De Pere, uh, Green Bay, any of those places, we haven't had issues. So I don't expect us to have issues here. It's a valid concern, um, but there's nothing to back up there, there being a safety issue uh, regarding pedestrians. So um, it'll work. It'll work. <laughs> in the middle of, um, of each roundabout, um, we purposely raise up the center of the roundabout. So if you look on your picture again, where it says um, learn to drive roundabouts, right in the middle there, we purposely raise that area up with dirt about six feet high. So you think, why in the world would they do that? Because I can't see the other side. You got it. We don't want you to see the other side. There isn't a reason to see the other side. If this is northbound coming across the bridge, this is southbound coming at us on Sunday, right? Everyone's coming southbound on Sunday, right? Okay, and I'm here. I don't care if it's backed up from here to, to Sister Bay. It won't be, by the way, but um, I don't care if it is because, because all you need to do in order to decide to enter the roundabout is all you need to do is worry about to your left. That's it. You have nothing more to do and on your decision is to look, look to your left. And that's all that there is to it. So we purposely raise this up so you can't see the other side. Okay? The more you see, believe it or not, the more you see at an intersection, the less safe it becomes. Truck apron. In the middle of the roundabout, you will see this red colored concrete, just, um, just like what's shown here. It's meant for what you see there, and that's it. It's meant for trucks to track up on if they need to. Um, you don't drive next to trucks. They need more space than you do, and sometimes they will <coughs> drive up on that truck apron. And people are gonna say, well, they built it too small. Too small. No, that's what it's for, okay? It's gonna handle, it's gonna handle pickup trucks pulling, fifth wheels pulling a boat. They'll fit. Semis, not a problem, okay? All that stuff, we can't design an intersection in Door County that won't handle pickup trucks pulling RVs, are you kidding me? Okay, it's just, we're, we're better than that, okay? So, just hold on a couple more slides and then we'll, then we'll back up. So, so again, the moral story with trucks is again, don't drive next to trucks, you don't do it in this, where trucks are turning at an intersection in the city or anywhere else, right? You don't drive next to them because they're going to win, and they don't want to. They don't want to cause a crash or anything like that. Okay. So the same is the case here. Don't drive next to trucks. This is a single lane roundabout in Manitowoc that was designed specially to handle. This is a wind a wind turbine component to one of the the um, the stems for the the windmills. This load here is twice as long as a normal semi. This load, if I'm, if I'm placing any bets, would fit through this roundabout without a problem, okay? So the point again is, is they're designed, the roundabouts are designed to handle the traffic that's there, the traffic that's been there, the traffic that wants to go there. So I'm gonna get into step by step on what, what to do when you approach and drive through a roundabout. Questions? Oh, that red part, uh, I didn't understand, does, does the the truck goes onto there, and then what, you go around it? Why is he in there? Okay, so what there is is, so her question is why, why are trucks required to use this truck apron? Okay, so if a truck is 
where these cars are, and they have to stay in their lane, okay? They have to stay in their lane, so their back tires are going to go up here. That's all, okay? So it's designed, if this truck's coming in here, and he goes straight through, his back tires are going to go up here a little bit, rather than going in this lane. Sometimes trucks will take both lanes. And again, don't enter next to them, because that's just not a good, good recipe for anything, okay? Any other questions? If traffic is backed up because um, a bridge is out, which happens very often in Central right. Bay, mm -hmm. um, and um, an ambulance needs to get someone to the hospital because we have a hospital right on Michigan, right? What happens? Yeah. So the question was, the if the bridge is up, when the bridge is up, and um, our police chief Harley needs to respond to a crash and needs to get someone either through the intersection <laughs> or an ambulance needs to get through. What happens now? What happens now when, when, that, when that situation occurs at the signal? What happens out there today? Traffic backs up through the intersection. The lights might turn green for the side street, or they might not. Ultimately, people get the heck out of the way when they see lights and sirens, right? But if you're in a roundabout, you might not be able to get into it. Yeah, yeah. So what will happen is, um, let me fast forward to Michigan here. Because this is a, it's a fair it's a fair concern a fair topic. Um, what's going to happen, right? Is traffic's going to back up from the bridge, and it's going to back up through here, okay? And here comes an ambulance through here, okay? What's going to happen with these cars? What are, you, what are they going to do? They're going to sit there and say, you know, tough beans ambulance. <laughs> No, they're going to get the heck out of the way. One way or another, they're going to get out of the way. They will get out of the way. It's a fire truck. It's a police car. It does not matter. These people will get out of the way. It doesn't matter what it says um, on their license plate. Okay? They're going to get out of the way. Um, Oshkosh has a lot of roundabouts, and I've talked to their fire chief, and he says he'd much rather respond through this, this kind of intersection than a traffic signal. At a traffic signal, you've got people that are backed up, um, one, and they have to kind of fight their way through this traffic. Here, people can, can work their way through, the officers at times will go the wrong way, whatever it takes. So, until you see it, it's hard to believe it, but that's what's going to happen. That's what we've seen happen everywhere else. Any other questions? Yeah? but. The circle that the truck is supposed to go up on in the center. Mm -hmm. Earlier, you talked about that color being for pedestrians or bicyclists. That not just the ones on the edges. They they're not. That doesn't count. That circular part. So, let's go back to the pedestrian part of it here. So what what I said before. So in the in the middle of the roundabout, the red colored. Pavement is for the trucks to track up on. Okay, yeah, but around the pedestrian, around where the pedestrians are, this is all going to be just regular, normal colored sidewalk around the outside of the roundabout. Okay, when they cross, this area here is is red, just like it's shown in the picture, to help help identify for the drivers that oh, there's a crosswalk coming up here. So that's that's what the way. So that, that's, that's no laid reference out. to that circular one then. No, that's a crosswalk. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk through what you're going to see and what it's going to take for you to understand how to drive through um, a roundabout. And these pictures are from all over um, northeast Wisconsin, so but it gives you a flavor of what what you're going to see. First thing you're going to see is a roundabout ahead, 15 mile an hour sign. What's the speed limit? It's going to be a question. What's the speed limit? Is it 15? No, it's not 15. Speed limit is whatever sign, whatever is the black and white sign. So the, by, the speed on the bypass on 4257 is not changing. It's the same speed. Okay. What we tell you is we tell you when you get close to this intersection up here, we, we think it's a good idea that you go about this speed. Just like when you're in the country and you come to a, an intersection, or excuse me, a curb in the road that's like this, and there's a sign there that says go 25. They're advising you to go 25. In this case, we're advising that you're going to go 15. Okay, if, if, a, if a kid goes through at 22 miles an hour, it doesn't cause a problem. 
He's not speeding. Okay? So, again, we're just telling you there's something different coming up ahead. You need to slow down to about this speed to safely maneuver your way through the intersection. Next, you're going to see a yield ahead sign. Again, it's just telling you, okay, there's something coming up. I need to slow down and I'm going to have to yield to somebody. All right. So this is important. This is where we like to spend, and I like to spend a little bit longer because it seems to confuse people. And that's okay. So at the, previously, we'll keep using Michigan Street as an example. You come across the ridge and you went to the YMCA. What lane were you always in before? To turn, to turn left, you would be in the, the left lane. This seems, seems simple, but let's talk through it. You're in the left lane to turn left to go to the YMCA. You tell me what lane you should be in next week when the roundabout opens to go to the YMCA. Which lane? Right lane. Right lane. Whoa. Whoa. The right lane. Who would be in the right lane? Come on, don't be bashful. <laughs> if you're coming from the north, you should be in the right lane. You're coming from the south. You're coming from the bridge. You will not be in the right lane. If you are, those guys with red and blue lights might come after you. And they should. Okay? What happens here is people think, and this happens everywhere, okay? People think that, oh man, if I'm in this if I'm in the left lane here, I'm gonna get trapped in here. Right? I'm gonna get trapped right here. Because this guy's gonna turn and he's gonna trap me. So I, therefore I want to be in this lane because I want I don't want to get trapped. Okay? What does it show on your pic on your picture here? On the right, you see those signs? That sign on the right where it's black and white? Okay, it shows you can be in either lane to go straight, or you have to be in the left lane to go left. Okay? So you cannot, you cannot turn left from this outside lane. No, no. Can't do it. You have to be in this left lane. 100% of the time. Never a choice. You're always in this lane. What happens if you turn left from this lane, and this guy goes straight through? This guy goes through. This guy turns left. There's a crash, I get the ticket. You have to be in the left lane to turn left. We are not going to design an intersection that requires you to turn left from the right lane. There's not, is there one in town? There's not one in town, I bet. If there is, I'd like someone to show me it. Okay? So, don't confuse us. Because we changed the square to a circle, your decision process is not any different. When you approach the intersection, it's not any different. If you want to go from here to here, anytime you turn left before, you're going to get in the left lane. The same is the case now. No questions. Okay? Now what lane do you have to be in to turn right? Right. 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 Can you be in the left lane to turn right? No. no. I can't, as you can tell, I can't emphasize this enough because they're going to be pulling their hair out. <laughs> Because it's going to happen. And that's not uncommon. It happens every place we build roundabouts for the first time. It's going to happen. And I realize we have a bunch of tourists here. I get that. Okay? But those, those tourists don't think that they're coming from a place where they don't have roundabouts. Right? They have them too. Illinois has roundabouts. You better believe it. So, okay, so the people kind of get that? All right, so now how do we help you make the decision on what lane to be in? So we have signs above the road. There will be signs just like this above the road that are going to tell you what lane to be in. They're going to look just like this. You can go through or left, and you can go through or right. That's what it's going to look like. In other places, we have signs like on the right, more information on them. Um, that's not what we're going to have here. We're just going to have the simple ones like, sh like shown there. At interchanges, we even have bigger destinations. I tell every group I talk to, if you have a driver's license in the state of Wisconsin, and you're approaching this, you're, you're in this car right here, and if you don't know if you're going to Green Bay, Sheboygan, or Milwaukee, there's nothing more we can do for you. <laughs> I mean, I could list, I suppose I could put UP, Lake Michigan, and Chicago. Maybe that's more, that's better, I'm not sure. Okay? So the point being is the information's there. 
The information is there. You as a driver have a responsibility to understand where you're going. That's not my job. You have to have an understanding where you're going. Well, how did you get to the how did you get to this building tonight? You made a conscious decision to turn left or turn right somewhere along the line. That was your responsibility. No one else. And the same is the case at roundabouts. Okay? So don't don't make it harder than what it is. To me, I understand, but to me it's simple. If I'm turning left, I'm always in the left lane. I don't even have to think about it. If I'm turning right, I'm always in the right lane. If I'm going straight through, I better pay attention to these signs because it might be different. That's all there is to it. Okay? So, next. So all we've done so far is yield the uh, roundabout ahead, yield ahead, and we decided what lane to be in. In Wisconsin, it's a state law, you have to yield to pedestrians and bicyclists in a crosswalk. That's the law. How many of you knew that? Yeah, that's the law. How many of you do that? Oh, this is a lying group. <laughs> it's very good if you all if you all do um, yield to pedestrians and bicyclists. That's awesome if you do. Um, it's not done very very well in Wisconsin. I'll be honest. Um, but anyway, it, it is the law that you do have to yield to pedestrians and bicyclists. As you get to the roundabout now, now you have to make a decision. Now I have to yield to traffic coming from my left, and I have to go right. That's all. That, I mean, there's a lot of stuff there, but in the end, you have to yield to traffic from your left. So let me ask you this: If I'm that black car, am I yielding right now? Because there's traffic to my left, I am right. Yeah. I'm yielding. Let me ask you this: What if this guy's not here? Do I still have to yield? Mm -hmm. yes. Yes. What about this? Yes. yes. You better believe it. Oh, all. Oh, yeah. All traffic. I don't care if there's eight lanes in here, which we wouldn't do that. But if there's, it doesn't matter if there's a car in this lane, a car in this lane, or neither one of these cars are here and it's just this van, you have to yield to all traffic to your left. No questions. You have the yield sign, not them. They have the right of way. Once they're in the circle, you, they have the right of way. You have to yield to all traffic on your left, okay? Once you're in the roundabout, then, then um, well here, here's a picture that shows no traffic to the left, both cars are going. Now, let me ask you this. If you pull up to the roundabout at 10 o'clock in the morning, excuse me, you're leaving the Y, you're going up north, um, and you wanna go this way, and there's not anybody here, what are you doing at this point? Are you stopping or are you just slowing down? Yeah, you don't stop. You stop, someone's going to tell you behind you to get going. Right? So you just keep on going. These are not stop signs. Now, if there's cars here, yeah, absolutely, then you have to stop, right? Once you're in the roundabout, keep your speed low. Stay in your lane. There's not a reason to change lanes. Okay? I don't know of one reason to change lanes in a roundabout. Unless, the only thing I can think of, and I don't even know, I, wouldn't, I would even argue whether or not you do it then, but is if someone with sirens on is behind you. If they are, then I'm, my advice to you would be exit the roundabout and pull over, just like you do normally. Okay? But you should not have to change lanes in the circle. As you exit, turn on your right turn signal. This is um, no formal study, but this is probably done maybe 1% of the time. Okay, not many people do it. Um, some people, some, listen up. Some law enforcement agencies I've heard in the past, they get kind of uptight about people not using their turn signals on. To me, it's not a big issue. What it does is, it, it, if, you, if this person had their turn signal on, it gives this person here an idea that they might be leaving. You never should assume a blinker. Is, is legitimate, right? But it gives this person an idea that that person might be leading. So, of all the steps, if you ignore one, I ignore that one at times. <clears throat> and then again, as you exit, yield to pedestrians and bicyclists. Again, it's our law. I took a picture. I didn't put it in the presentation because I probably would get in trouble. This person was actually sitting right here, and the police car drove right past. 
And I thought, you know what, I better not put that in there if I get in trouble. <laughs> it was down in the valley. It wasn't around here. <clears throat> so who has questions about what we just went through? I like to like that. Me? Okay. Yeah. I have several. First of all, about your brochure here. I'm confused because Michigan Street is over here. This is County T. Yeah. The Y is over here. That's right. That's right. So if I'm coming up Michigan mm -hmm. and I'm going to turn to the bridge, I have to yield to the people coming from north. Correct. Okay. After church on Sunday, I'm going to turn right to go to the bridge. Okay. I'm going to be sitting there all day because you have to, the traffic is going to be backed up to the mill. And I have to yield. And I call the DOT and before you even put the roundabouts in, expressing my concern. The gentleman told me, you're going to have to pull out. I said, no, I no, don't no, think no. so. He did tell me that. I said, I don't think so. I'm going to tell you no. He said, that's what he told me. He said, well, then we'll have to block the street off. I'm serious. That, I've got it documented at home. So that's my first concern. We'll be sitting there all day. Um, <laughs> second of all, um, the signs say, yield to pedestrians within a crosswalk. They can get a ticket for stepping off the curb. It says within, not in. That means in the crosswalk. That's right. Okay. And um, what was the other thing you said? Um, I'll have to think about it. But I had a couple other things that you mentioned that. So regarding, regarding your first one, and this is the case whether it's church, whether it's Friday, whether it's Sunday, a special event, whatnot. You're coming here and you want to go to the bridge. Everyone is leaving and going back home. Okay, very, very busy. Very busy, right? So how am I going to get out? That question has come up time and time again and it's fair. Okay, because this is so busy. How, do, how and when do these people need to stop? They need to stop for anyone to their left, correct? So all these people momentarily will have to slow down and stop for anyone that's doing this, and for anyone that's doing this, and for anyone that might be doing this, correct? So at the, the time of which somebody does this, or this, now that's momentarily stopped that traffic, correct? So what has that done? It's provided a gap for these people to go ahead and enter. But question, since we don't really know at that point, even if they have their blinkers on, whether they're gonna do the U-turn or the left turn, we probably will, we have a very short time to get in there. there. That gap will exist. Until you experience it, it's hard, you know, again, it's hard to believe that gap will exist. When that car comes in front of these vehicles right here, momentarily stops them, there is enough time for one, if not two cars to get in here. Okay? It, there, there will be. Same thing on Friday, right? This is going to be busy. How do, um, how do I get out? It's just the, the opposite, but that, that will exist. <coughs> yeah. In the theory, you changed it so that the right-hand lane in a busy place like that, on the south of the side of the drive, they, yep. they uh, changed it so you could only turn right. I see right now where you go from single lane up the highway there ways to two lanes, you're going to get the people racing up both of them because they, the way you've got it drawn here, they can both go around and go to the bridge. That's, that's true. That's true. So in some locations, and, and I talked to the gentleman in the back um, before we started, some locations will even have a, a, a turn lane to not even have people go through. And the only time we do that is when we have a lot of people that are turning right. A lot. Hundreds. We don't have that here. Okay? To your point, um, one lane across the bridge to two lanes to handle the amount of turning traffic that's going on here at the intersection. Two lanes through. And what you'll typically see is generally you will not very often see two cars next to each other in the roundabout. This guy, this one in the right lane, it's going to be ahead of the other one, or vice versa, he's going to be in front of the other one. So when they get to this exit and they need to come back to one, they've auto automatically created kind of that opportunity to merge back together. Now I'm not saying that you're not going to have people racing, right, because at Egg Harbor that's your last chance. Egg Harbor Road, your last chance to get in front of that slow guy in front of you for the next how many miles, right? Okay, so that, that 
condition will exist a little bit, but the, the nature of the roundabout is generally you won't have a lot of times where you'll have cars right next to each other, you know, through the circular. But you got a roundabout to the north at Egg Harbor. Yep. And this one, they're going to be racing between the two. I mean, they got to be single lane. Right? They got to be single lane, so they don't can race lanes. so much, just like they have for the last how many years, right? Sir, I, I'm confused. Which is Michigan, and which north and south? This is the bridge. This is to the north. The Bayview Bridge. The Bayview bridge. bridge is over here. Yep, this is the YMCA. Yep. Oh, okay. So north is to the right. Yeah. Two more things. Um, if a bicyclist has to follow the rules of the road, why, when they're in a crosswalk, do they have a right of way? Because they're crossing. At that point, they become. Um, at that point they become a pedestrian. So they have to, when you are in the crosswalk, the state law requires you to yield to that person using that crosswalk. If they're walking their bike, yes. That's how I was taught as a kid. Do you know for sure, Riley? I don't know for sure. I mean, I could reread that statute, even, but... Even a crosswalk and across the bridge, when I was a kid, we had to follow the rules of the road, and we had to walk our bike. It's a, yeah, a Different walk, areas, so. different municipalities, we will allow or not allow bicyclists to ride their bikes on sidewalks. I don't know what it is here in Sturgeon Bay, but I know throughout Northeast Wisconsin, they're not all the same. Um, but if you're crossing here and you're riding a bike, I mean, I'm not, I hate talking about the what if, because this, I mean, it, could it happen? Absolutely. Has it happened? No. This it just, it hasn't happened. In the hundred and some roundabouts that we've had in our northeast Wisconsin, it hasn't happened. And we have bicyclists and skateboarders and everyone using it. One more thing. When you were talking, I think you made a mistake. You said about um, the DOT checking out the intersection at Michigan. Um, we already had stoplights there. I think you meant they are the road. No, I meant Michigan because that intersection could not stay the way that it was. Oh. To handle the future traffic, that intersection would need to have been improved. It would need to have been bigger. And to handle the same amount of traffic, the footprint would have been bigger, the turn lanes would have been longer, it would, would require more money to rebuild that as a, as, as a traffic signal. Okay, so let me finish up here and then we can go through some more questions if you have some. Um, so we kind of talked step by step on how to drive through, okay, your kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, this is what they see when they get their driver's license. This is in the driver's handbook, okay. Five plus years ago, that wasn't even in there. We had some simple little graphic that didn't really tell you a whole lot. Now that's in there. So kids, grandkids, nieces, nephews, the good thing about them learning is it's great that they understand, but now they can tell mom and dad when they do something wrong, they can teach them, right? And that's that's a way of that's a way of learning. Um, so the point of this is again, there's a ton of information. I don't expect you to understand a lot of it. Um, you would if you read it, you'd understand it. But again, you're in the left lane to turn left, and you're in the right lane to turn right. No matter what, no matter what, it doesn't matter if you're in Sturgeon Bay, it doesn't matter if you're in Keele, doesn't matter if you're in Gillette, it doesn't matter if you're in Fond du Lac. All those places have roundabouts. That it doesn't matter, okay? That's where you need to be. So again, here's Michigan Street. We kind of looked at that a little bit. Here's Egg Harbor, Egg Harbor Road. So in Wisconsin, we have on all highways, all roadways, whether they're state roads, city roads, county roads, 350 plus roundabouts in our state. Um, you can see a good percent of them, DOT has nothing to do with. Okay, so it's not big bad DOT saying, okay, we need to do this. The local units of government, they think it's a good idea. Okay, and they're building them on their own without any input from DOT. Drivers in favor before construction, about a third. A third of the people, if you ask them, am I in favor of this? About a third. Soon after, about half. And a year after, two thirds or three quarters. Okay, that's going to happen here. There's, I, if I, how many, if you don't mind, how many of you are against it, don't like it, are afraid of it, okay? <laughs> and all you come back next year, I, I, I will guarantee you, less, not as many of you are going to raise your hands, okay? 
That's just the way that it is. That's the way that it is. And it's common. We have, I talked to the city of Appleton traffic engineer two weeks ago. And he said they were talking about a project and traffic signals did not even come up. Didn't even come up. There are people there in their community wanting to run well. They didn't even talk about a traffic signal. That wouldn't have happened five, six, seven years ago. They would have not liked it. So we have a number of other things that we've done. Um, from about brochures and posters. If you want any information, I can give you a card and get you whatever you'd like. Um, but we're, you know, DOT is serious about about roundabouts, about making them work, about educating the drivers and the people that are going to use them. Um, these these are a couple little things that we have on our on our website. If you have access to the internet, um, you can you can look at those. Um, if you don't, I can I can email you something. Uh, otherwise. Uh, the same the same files. Um, we have testimonials, right? I can get a testimony anytime from someone that's in favor. I can get testimonials of those people that are against, right? But the point with these are these are these are people who responded crashes at intersections, who dealt with backups at previous intersections. This one's by a racetrack um, in in Kakana, uh, Brown County. So you know, again, don't don't get me wrong. I understand there's people that are against it. But these are people who, that we look to on, on the industry side and say, you know what, it's kind of important to have Schneider Nationals backing and they think it's a good idea for their drivers to be driving through a roundabout than a traffic signal. Okay? So, in the end, again, roundabouts are different. The biggest thing is that they're, they're, they're different and we're not used to driving through them, but what the decisions you make are very much the same in what you've always done. Choose what lane to get in. When you get up to the roundabout, you yield to traffic from your left. You stay in your lane, and you're, and you're essentially you're good to go. Okay. So with that being said, next week Monday, from 11 to 1, you can come to the Michigan Street Roundabout and walk around. Park at the YMCA parking lot, and and myself and others will be there, and you can get a first-hand look at at the real thing before they open up, okay? If you're, if you're not able to do that or not interested in doing that, what I would advise you is if you're afraid or you're not sure of, of you know, should I do this or shouldn't I, go sit and watch it at 10 in the morning. Don't watch it when it's extremely busy. Go sit and go park in the YMCA parking lot at 10 in the morning and just go watch it work for a little bit. Go with someone else, go with a group of people and say, you know what, this isn't so bad, okay? So, I hope this helps. You know, again, I'm willing to stick around as long as we need to to talk through any concerns that you might have, um, and hopefully it was worth your time, yeah. I have a question, not about the round, but about the highway. Did, um, how far is it a double lane now? It, uh, the two lanes exiting the roundabout, I don't have an exact distance. It's less than, probably less than a thousand feet. Okay, so it goes back to one and then back to two, two. and then Correct. Back, so. That's right. Yeah. So it's not very long. So what did you do on, on T then? The double doll was up to To the east? On T. Yeah. On T, not next to uh, Pick and Save. Alabama. What Alabama. 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 What we did at Alabama um, is I don't. I do have a picture. Um, it off there. Alabama will be just like Utah to the, by the bridge. So Alabama, what you're going to see there is people will be able to turn right off the highway. Oh, that didn't work. They'll be able to turn right off the highway and right onto the highway, but you're not going to be able to cross the highway. So if you want to go north, then you have to go on a cover road in order to go north. Because you can't turn on it. Left. Yeah, you're going to be able to, so in the past, if you're on Alabama and you want to turn left to go to the bridge or left to go into town, you won't be able to do that anymore. You have to turn right, go to Egg Harbor, and either take our Egg Harbor or you can do a U-turn and come back. We had enough safety problems here that this had to be done. This just had to be done. Just like Utah had to be done. And these work great. It's an inconvenience for those that are used to using it and crossing and turning left onto the highway, absolutely. 
but this is ultimately this is safe. Yeah. When you're coming to an area that you don't know anything about, mm -hmm. and you get into the roundabout and different lanes and go to different different roads, it's terrifying which way to turn. Uh, is, do you have any suggestions? Yeah. So her question was. You know, at, when you're not familiar with where you are, you're from out of town, you're from out of state, or you know, you're going somewhere where you're not ultimately sure. And how do I know what lane to be in? Okay. And again, there's a little bit when I when I talked earlier, there's a little bit of responsibility as a driver to know where you're going, a little bit, right, within reason. Um, so there's that part of it, and the other part is ultimately, if you make a mistake. And you know what, you know, I was in this right lane and um, here, and I wanted to go here. Okay, what, what would you do at a regular intersection if you, if you got to that point? What would you do? Would you, turn, would you turn in the middle of the intersection? No, no. no you go down here and do what? Turn around, turn around and come back. Turn around and come back. Okay? It's not any different than what, I don't, it will happen. People are going to say, oh man, I just missed my turn. You know, hopefully they don't turn at the last second within the roundabout. Some of them will. Um, but the reality is it's not any different. If you missed your turn, you made the wrong decision, you go down the street, you figure out a place to safely turn around, and then you come back. Well, it's just easy to go to Egg Harbor Road and make you go around the roundabout. You go to Egg Harbor and make a U-turn, absolutely. Go to the roundabout. That's right. Yeah. Did you yeah. bring up the picture of the Egg Harbor roundabout again? You didn't once earlier. this quite a bit and what really bothers me about roundabouts is the last minute uncertainty. If I'm approaching, for example, Michigan Avenue, Michigan Street, with a stoplight there I can look straight through the intersection, I can evaluate where I want to be, where other people are, uh, and then as I approach the intersection all I have to worry about is whether the light changes color, whether somebody jumps into the intersection that isn't supposed to be there or a squirrel or a dog runs through. That's about it. With these things, I have to come in there, and I don't know whether I have to stop until I can see the guy on the left. And I don't know whether the guy in front of me is going to stop either, so I have to leave plenty of room in front of me, you know, right. plenty, of, plenty of stopping room, but right. between me and the guy, and, you know, that, these are all last minute decisions. I, 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 what you're explaining is very, very, normal yeah it's very normal for those that haven't done it this is like holy man this is something different i got so much to think about how am i going to be able to make my own decision and and what you're going to find okay what you're going to find is you're here and, and you ultimately want to go left you know you're just worried about that car in front of you that's it and then you're worried about if there's anyone here okay and it, it seems, for those who haven't done it, or haven't done it enough, it seems overwhelming. But I can't emphasize enough. Go watch it. Go do it at 10 in the morning. You know, make your circles. If you want to go to Egg Harbor to Michigan, to Egg Harbor to Michigan, go ahead. You can do that for as long as you want. Um, but the point is, you, you just need to get the experience yourself to be able to realize that, you know what, this isn't, this isn't so bad. Okay? At busier times, it's going to be a little more challenging. There's no doubt. But it... It takes that that comfort level in understanding what are all the things that I need to think about in order to make the decision that's safe for me. And you're not going to be darting out in front of traffic. You're not going to be doing that. Okay? It's not like we built these things and like, well, let's good luck. Uh uh. Okay? The numbers are what the numbers are. Those are real numbers. 38% less injuries. That's, that's tremendous in our book. 
So I, I don't know what to offer you other than, you know, just, just try it. Just try it, and you're going to find out that, you know what, this isn't as bad as what I had feared. Yeah. I like the first animation that you had on when we came in, where the vehicles were moving around. And did you uh, say that we can bring that up? But you have no website whatsoever. It's right in the middle of the circle. No. WisconsinRoundabouts.gov. Uh, yep, and this, that and animation is on there. Okay. If I were to click on one of these, you won't be able to hear it, but if you were to click on each one of these, a box will tell you what, come up and tell you step by step what to do. If I want to turn... If I'm a truck and I want to turn left, click on this one and it's going to tell you step by step what that truck does. What if a, a fire truck comes? It'll tell you step by step the things to think about and things to do um, when, when those situations come up. So that's on there. Anything else? What did you say? Monday at what time? Monday from 11 to 1. Park at the YMCA and walk on over.